November 8, SpaceX posted revised FCC filings, proposing changes to their Starlink satellite network. I'm going to look briefly at the changes that they've made and see what effects they might have on the, how the network functions. In their original proposal, the first 1,600 satellites were at an altitude of 1,150 kilometers. There were 32 orbital planes and 50 satellites in each orbital plane. The new proposal changes this initial phase considerably. In the revised proposal, the first phase of the satellites are at a much lower altitude of 550 kilometers. There are fewer orbital planes, there are 24, but there are more satellites in each orbital plane, 66, so the total number of satellites is roughly unchanged. Okay, so let's look at the implications this will have for how the network itself will function. First thing we can look at is how close the satellites get to each other as they cross. In their original proposal, the satellites would get as close as 40, 43 kilometers as they crossed, um, which is fairly close. Um, in the new proposal, SpaceX had various different options for how they could phase the satellites in neighboring orbital planes, and these result in different distances. Um, they appear to have chosen a, a phase offset between the orbital planes of 13 24 and this gives a closest closing distance as satellites cross of just over 90 kilometers. So that's considerably better than their previous proposal. If we look upwards, we can see that there's still a considerable number of satellites that you can see in the sky at any one moment in time, although there are fewer than there were in their previous proposal because the satellites are in lower altitude orbits. Now in the original proposal, it looked like SpaceX were going to have five laser links per satellite to link between the satellites. Um, the new proposal seems to reduce this to four, um, though it's not quite clear whether all the satellites in the first phase of, of the constellation will actually have four. I'm going to assume that they will for the purposes of this animation. To build a good mesh network, I think it makes most sense to route forwards and backwards along the same orbital plane, and then to the neighboring orbital planes, you probably want to offset the lasers by one to produce routes that run a little bit more east-west than if you just route the na nearest neighboring satellite in the next orbital plane. You can see that the side lasers do need to track as we move around the orbit, but they don't need to track very fast, and it looks like this should be quite feasible. You can see how those side lasers produce pretty good east-west paths. And as most of the population that would have the money to pay for using this network lives on fairly northerly latitudes, that produces a network which should be pretty good for SpaceX. If we add in the rest of the lasers, you end up with a mesh network that produces pretty good connectivity to almost anywhere, although it is definitely biased towards east-west paths. Now, in any one area of the sky, roughly half the satellites are moving northeast and half are moving southeast. Without the fifth laser, there's no good way to connect between them locally. So it's really important that you don't just do what this is doing here, which is going up to the most immediately overhead satellite, routing across and back down again. If you do that, you get strange dogleg paths. Instead, what you want to do is to feed both the radio links and the laser links into your shortest path routing computation. And if you do that, then you'll automatically select satellites that are on the same phase of the satellite constellation. You get good paths, like these ones here. As you can see, so long as we don't build up any queues in the satellites, then it's possible to get from London to New York and back in something like 46, 47 milliseconds with this new constellation, which is a little bit better than you did with the old one. Despite having fewer laser links per satellite, the new constellation works actually really very well for an awful lot of paths. It's very good for, say, London, San Francisco, it's very good for London, Singapore, and, and paths like that. You can see here that we're going to get a round trip time between London and Singapore of around 90 milliseconds, which is close to half what you can get on the current internet.
Where the lack of that fifth laser starts to hurt, though, is with north-south paths. We aim the side lasers mostly east-west, and so if you're going to want to go north-south, you're often going to end up with something of a dog-leg path, like you can see here from London to Johannesburg. One thing that the old version of the constellation was really good at was providing lots of different parallel paths between the same pair of cities. Um, the new constellation can still do that, but it's not quite as good. So here we can see multiple paths between London and New York, and it certainly manages the first two, maybe four paths really well. But previously we could get something like 14 paths between London and New York, and now it seems to top out somewhere around eight or nine. And that's just because there simply now aren't enough different paths um, without that fifth laser. So all I've looked at here is the proposed new first phase of SpaceX's satellite constellation. They've still proposed to have 1,600 satellites in higher altitude orbits and another large number of satellites in polar orbits. And those proposals haven't changed. You can see, you can see those here. The first phase satellites, the ones in 550 kilometer orbits, are in red. The next group, the 1100 or so kilometer orbit satellites, are in white, and then the polar orbit satellites are in blue. Um, it has not clear to me yet whether these other satellites will actually interconnect with the 550 kilometer orbit satellites, or whether they'll effectively act as a separate constellation. Um, we'll have to wait and see how things go with that.